to cloud. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Essential Oils 101 for pets. Tonight's going to be fun. We're going to talk about our beloved furry friends and what essential oils are good and not so good for them. Um, uh, today is April 18th, 2017, and we're in sunny Florida. We're experiencing very hot and very dry weather. So we're all praying for rain, for sure. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and um, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat box. I will do my best to answer those questions as we move along, but I will open it up for Q&A uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, feel free to take any screenshots um, of the recipes that will follow, and um, I will be uh, citing my sources too, so you guys will no, um, oh, why wasn't this doing it? All right, there we go. All right, so I love this little picture, it's so cute. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Deanna Snyder and I am a wellness advocate for the doTERRA company and I have over 30 years experience in the medical field. So I like to combine my Western medical training with a more holistic, proactive approach. So I like to say I'm more proactive now than being reactive. And with our loved ones, with our little furry friends, um, we can do the same and apply that same information. So I, I couldn't start this Essential Oils 101 class if um, I didn't introduce you to my furry babies. And um, this is Scruffy. Um, on the left, she's the taller one. We actually found her. Um, my neighbor found her and uh, they couldn't keep her and she was literally a scruffy mess. And when we took her, when they took her to the vet, they shaved her down and found out she was a little poodle. So her name Scruffy Stook, took, and although she was a lady. And then about a uh, few months later, we were at the Winter Park Art Festival and uh, this little snowball to the right, I named him Charlie, he um, came into our lives. And um, I should have been um, forewarned because when they, uh, he wasn't adoptable at that time because he had just been neutered and he had uh, opened up his incision. So uh, we, I had to go back on that Monday and get him from the Orange County Rescue. And um, in the meantime, I was banned from the Seminole County uh, Humane Society because we had adopted another dog. Before that, we had fixed her and she wasn't working out. And so um, we were gonna take her back. They said, sure, no problem. And when we did take her back, they um, said, you can't take her. Oh, um, we were gonna take her back, but then a friend of ours wanted her. So we figured that would be more humane than putting Bailey back into the pound. Uh, she needed to have a family with kids and another dog. So when we went back to adopt another dog, they asked us where Bailey was. I said, we had given her to a friend and I had called and you said it was okay. And they said, no, we didn't. They basically called me a liar and said I could not adopt from the Seminole Hall County Humane Society for the rest of my life. So came home that day crying hysterically because we really wanted a dog and my neighbor found little Miss Scruffy Meister here. So. That's her when we first got her. And then of course, this is one of my favorite pictures of uh, Charlie. He's so sweet. He loved his Winnie the Pooh. That's them at Christmas time. And that's my mom's dog, Harry, who is a crazy wired fox terrier. If anybody knows about wire fox terriers, terriers, you know the word wired is why they name him that because he was such a bouncy little mess and um, very, very, um, labor intensive. So fast forward to now, well, back in 2007, these two sweet babies came into my life, Bella and Luna. They were rescued from an Oak Hill raid where they had uh, 89 poodles in an 1,100 square foot home. So if they were pregnant or a puppy, they were outside. So, um, which was really hard um, for them. They did not know what the inside was like and, um, they uh, were very traumatized when they came in. So um, if someone's on the call, I hear some background. Um, if you could just mute yourself, that would be great because it's coming through. So just in the lower or upper corner, you'll hear the mute, see the mute button. 
just go ahead and, and click on that, please. That would be wonderful. Um, so here's um, little Miss Bella and Luna in the car. They love riding in the cars. And then um, this was towards Bella's end of her life. This was a couple years ago. As you can see, she had one totally white eye and uh, she was completely blind. And um, on Thursday, we will be um, celebrate not celebrating, but uh, remembering the year of her passing. So I can't believe it's been a year so far. And little sweet Luna's underneath the, the desk with me now, so maybe she'll make an appearance later. But um, I know how much everybody loves their pets, and we are probably willing to do more for our furry loved ones than we are to, um, in and up to ourselves. Um, so I wanted to say that um, you know essential oils are extremely good for your pets, um, and uh, not all essential oils are created equal. So tonight. I'm going to expose you to a variety of different recipes from doTERRA uh, to help support your uh, pets. So as with ourselves, I know those of you that have seen my lectures in the past, uh, you are very familiar with this stair-step approach here. And of course, feeding our pets the right food is the key, number one most um, precious thing that we can do for ourselves and for our own bodies and for our pets. Um, feeding them the good food helps nourish their bodies. I always say if we put bad gas in our car, we're gonna plug and chug down the highway. Um, same thing with our bodies. If we put the wrong foods in our bodies, then we're gonna plug and chug. Of course, having them exercise, you know, dogs and cats need lots of exercise um, to keep them well and moving and, um, and, and even our, our furry friends have need adequate rest and they need to manage their stress as well because our environments that we have can, can be stressful just with noise, um, you know, other dogs uh, being left alone all day. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of different stresses that our, our beloved pets endure. And then of course, reducing our toxic load as far as what we put on our pets, um, what we put in them, what we clean our houses with, uh, some of the toxic environments that are, are um, you know, lawn care and um, environmental issues that we have out there that, you know, their bodies are small and, you know, they don't, um, can, they can absorb those toxicities and kind of overwhelm them. So a lot of that is our lifestyle and 90% of adult onset disease can be governed by, by what we do with our lifestyle. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that is probably equal with pets as well. Um, you know, we want to have informed self-care for our pets. We want to get them checked out and we want to make sure that we are doing those proactive medical care. I'm having technical difficulties here. So these are the two books that I'm going to be sourcing from. Um, you can get them on Amazon or um, The Oil Life dot com or aromatools.com. Uh, they're very good books. Uh, the, the one on the left, Spoil Your Pet, is actually um, from a, uh, a veterinarian and a, I thought the other one was a vet, but she's got an MSC by her name, so I'm not familiar with that. Um, so, and um, Julie says if anybody um, needs a Spoil Your Pet, she actually has one for sale, so you can, um, those that know Julie, can um, reach out to her. Okay, so here's some reflexology for our, our little puppy dogs that we have. So you guys can take a screenshot of that. Um, reflexology is a, a great way to massage the oils into their um, paws. And just like with humans, um, you know, on the, on the hand or the paw or the foot, um, it equates to different areas in our um, body. Um, for humans, it's like head to toe. And as you can see, the different um, parts for uh, the paw as well. Now, I could not get a good cat one. So for you people that have cat, um, you know, cats in your home, 
um, just go ahead and Google cat reflexology and you will see this chart and it'll be a whole lot clearer than what it is on the screen. So my sincere apologies to you for that. So Dr. David Hill is going to talk to you tonight about um, why doTERRA and um, I always have three or two main reasons why I choose doTERRA. The, the first one is our co-impact sourcing. And that is where we source oils all over the world, where we have a fair trade agreement with these farmers that is, um, you know, bringing in revenue, a fair trade price to them. Um, it is also um, where uh, the actual plant is harvested in the indigenous land. So for those of you that are wine connoisseurs, you know if a grape is harvested in one part of the world versus another, the soil, the climate, and the uh, um, uh, harvesting of that grape is going to produce a far superior wine or champagne than if it's sourced elsewhere. And the same thing with the essential oils. So all of that comes into play with that. So that's the first start where our purity begins. And then the second focus that I like is our CPTG or our certified pure therapeutic grade quality that we do to test essential oils where we test every single batch three times and then we send it out to a third party as well. And it's tested for uh, any fillers, synthetics, pesticides, herbicides, um, bugs, weeds, whatever. Um, so I like to say it's organic plus. And um, it is tested at the time that we harvest, at the time that it is barreled, and at the time that it is shipped back to our facility in Salt Lake City, where it is actually bottled. And also, it is also tested by these third parties. And at any time in that testing supply chain that it is rejected, it goes back into the market for other essential oil companies to pick up. So when I heard that, that was a little alarming for me. So doTERRA um, set the standard they created our company about eight years ago um, to set the standard in the community and the essential oil industry where there was none to raise that bar and to bring uh, oil into every home is, is one of our goals. And uh, I do believe that will happen. We are about 45, 4.5 million um, accounts now. So we are definitely growing uh, far and wide and it is a, a, an amazing, company to be part of. So I'm going to go ahead and let Dr. Hill talk. So when we talk about quality, it's not always about what testing you're doing. You have to look at the whole process and what that means collectively. And I believe that doTERRA does that better than anyone else. doTERRA is the best company in the industry right now, I mean, they're the leaders. I mean, there's no one that's really come close to doing what they're doing. I haven't seen anything like it in my 20 years of being in this industry of a company going to the lengths that they go to to secure the best oil in the world. The tariff's commitment to quality starts well before the uh, plants are even distilled. Uh, through our coin pack sourcing, the CPTG process starts then. And, and then it goes through a, a three-tiered testing process uh, that starts with outside labs and, and finishes off inside the company here and then continues on after the bottles are sold. Uh, we do several layers of testing including uh, GCMS, optical rotation, specific gravity, refractive index, chiral testing, carbon-14, probably more extensive than just about any lab out there. I've been doing research with essential oil for about 15 years now. So I work with a lot of oils and a lot of tests, and um, the one thing that I've noticed consistently is that unless you're starting with an oil that has a consistent quality, you're not going to get good results. You know, a lot of our oils are used in aromatherapy or topical use. So we want to make sure that we do not only make a product that's in, um, effective, but it's also going to be safe. And that's why we, we um, do a thorough analysis to, to, to look at the composition to make sure that it is safe. But at the same time, we also go ahead and do skin irritation testing, which is also called as uh, the grip testing or repeat insult patch testing, to make sure that when you apply it on topically, it's not irritating you to, to your skin. True wellness advocate, we are, we always keep them in mind. 
and we we talk about it in our training and what matters is that the details matter you know quality is in the details and so because we're so passionate and so detailed we're sure not to miss those things that are going to make the difference between just an okay product and a great product we stand behind our quality processes because we have the most in-depth and knowledgeable staff we have set the standard for what the quality process should be the testing knowledge that is gained uh, as well as passed on with each bottle is you, you cannot measure one of the things that i've recognized uh, about the quality of essential oils and the testing is that it's a dynamic environment that's changing and this is why it's so important that doTERRA leads the front, that doTERRA is developing and processing and coming up with new ways, new opportunities to prove out the quality of essential oils and frankly, in a way that no other company is able to do. As we continue to grow, as we continue to expand throughout the world, I'm proud to say that doTERRA has made that commitment and will not waver or deviate from that. So I think they did a far better job of explaining than I did. Um, Dr. Hill is an amazing, amazing man. So essential oils are highly effective. Uh, they are 50 to 70, 70 times more powerful than herbs. So less is more with essential oils. A little goes a long way. And you always want to start out with a drop. Um, for instance, one drop of peppermint is equal to 25 cups of peppermint tea. It has that same medicinal uh, uh, effect uh, for, for uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Has that same that my brain just kind of went away. I have to sniff more peppermint. Anyway, so a little goes a long way. Um, so we've got great websites that support everything for you guys to learn more about it. So doterrascienceblog.com is a great one. Uh, doterra.com is another great one. We've got a lot of videos. There's a lot of blogs on that as well. Um, so those are really great. And then we've got another one called Source to You with a, it'll link from the doTERRA site, which you can actually type in the uh, bottle, the number that's on the bottom of your bottles. Um, they're slowly adding more and more. So if it's a newer bottle, it'll be in there. Um, and how its little life process has been through its journey and all the different testings that it has. So it's a great, great website. It's the doTERRA source to you. All right. So uh, let's see. Sharon, if, can you mute yourself, honey? It pops back off. I don't know. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So what are essential oils? So this little doggy is thinking, what are they, right? So they're naturally occurring volatile aromatic compounds. So that means that these little oil sacs are in, found in the seeds, the bark, the stems, the roots, the flowers, and all parts of the plant. And we actually distill those um, via either cold pressing, which we do all of our citrus, or steam distillation for our leaves, our twigs, our flowers, um, the roots. Um, and so that's how they are actually made and harvested. Some essential oils are very, um, uh, we've got a very short window from the time that they are harvested out of the ground to the time that they are dis steam distilled. And for one of those is our Melissa oil. And that essential oil is more on the pricier side um, because it only has a four hour window from the time that it is pulled to the time that it is distilled. So, um, which is pretty, Pretty amazing. All right. Okay, I've lost my mouse. Here we are. So how to use essential oils on dogs. So we're going to go ahead and watch this um, real quick. It's from Caesar Milan and a dog. He wants to see for himself how Cobar reacts to squeaky toys. Good girl, Cindy. Good girl. I got this feeling from the beginning that it was going to be about being calmer than usual. Courtney. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. just going to block so I can say it. Yeah, 
Kumar finds her escape blocked by the nimble feet of a Douglas for a crew member. We need that sort of energy, but we need to start with lots of calm energy and then slowly bring the assertive energy. One of the pack members went after her. When a member of the pack becomes weak, they go after them. The way they help the weak one is by pinning them down, biting them, or removing them from the pack, which is, is no help. That only keeps her away from the situation. So at that moment, I have to help. And, and so what I did is to give her a massage. Good boy. Good boy. Ready? Beautiful. It took a little while for me to figure out what this dog really needs. The first thing is the head to lay on the ground. Second will be the tail to go into a more relaxed position. Dogs like Koba require constant help. You can't miss one second of help. That's how sensitive this case is, and that's how time consuming it is. I felt a lot of tension in her back. So that's when I said, okay, we need the help of something that can accelerate this release of energy a little quicker than a massage. You think we can get an acupuncturist person here? Yes. She needs, right. She's so tight. We have to remove some of that pent up energy. Acupuncture it has worked for us tremendously. Normally we get relaxation through exercise, or through rules, boundaries, and limitations, but today is just about relax. It's all about relaxing today. Caesar rubbed some lavender scented oil in his hands to see if aromatherapy will help calm Kobar. When I get nervous myself or when I get a little anxious, I definitely use oils or any kind of scent that they can calm me down. We use a little bit of the oil just to change the association. This scent is for you to become calm. This sight is for you to become calm. The sound is eventually for you to become calm. Yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> oh, you're making the toy smell like it. Oh, okay, good, all right. Because the eyes and the ears is making her back away. The nose brings them to it. So by her bringing her nose to the toy? Mm -hmm. The brain comes to it. Yeah. See, right now, even though she's doing that, it's not as tense as she was earlier. Oh, absolutely. So that's when I was, there you go. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel it when they're about to just give it up. Yeah. Even if she sees the toy, she runs. So I wanted to make sure that the sight part is also under control. Mm -hmm. I put the toy on her neck so she can learn to carry them around and to sleep with the toy and to walk with the toy. The squeaky toy is hanging. I wanted her to attach that experience to the uh, visual. I have to convince her that this doesn't necessarily represent sleep. There you go. It can represent just being quiet. That's the most relaxed I've ever seen her close to a toy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's sweet. I had to reach under my desk and get my little baby. It just makes my heart sad but I'm glad that everything is okay now. Okay, so let's get back to how to use essential oils for dogs and cats as well. Um, you never want to apply them to your pet's eyes or, your, or their nose or on their genitalia. And you never want to apply it to the tips of long ear dogs as well because those ears are long and if they shake their head, the oils can then get into their eyes. Um, it, just like with any adult or baby or, or any human, 
if any skin irritation occurs, you want to always put on fractionated coconut oil or some type of vegetable oil. Uh, because if you know, oil and water don't mix. So if you put water on a irritation with the essential oil, all it's going to do is spread it, um, where the oil will quell it and it will stop it. So oil and oil um, go together. Oil and water don't mix. Okay. So not all essential oils are safe for cats and or dogs. So we're gonna go ahead and list those. And this would be a good idea to get a screenshot of. Um, so avoid these essential oils for dogs. You wanna avoid wintergreen. You wanna avoid melaleuca, better known as tea tree, birch, thyme, clove, and, um, and clove has a precaution. Um, if you're diluting it for post-oral surgery or for gum disease, clove is good for that. But again, you've got to dilute it. You want to stay away from oregano because oregano is very hot oiled as well. And you only want to use oregano when you're dealing with parvovirus. And then any essential blends that contain the above. With doTERRA, we have a lot of proprietary blends. So you wanna be mindful that it does not contain any of those mentioned. Now, they recommend not using essential oils on dogs that are less than three months old and dogs that are less than 10 pounds. So you also want to dilute one drop to one tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil. So it's gonna be dealing like with a, uh, an infant or a, or a newborn and a toddler. So puppies, you want to do one drop, uh, puppies three to six months of age, you wanna do one drop uh, to one and a half teaspoons of fractionated coconut oil. And if your dog is sensitive, you know, add more coconut oil. You're not going to dilute the strength of the essential oil. You're just going to dilute the mixture of it. So it's not going to be as um, harmful to the skin. And of course, with pregnant, old, or sick dogs, you want to use caution and dilute um, considerably. Okay. Now cats. Cats are different, as we all know, um, and they are extremely more sensitive to essential oils than dogs. And they are actually um, uh, missing an enzyme in their liver, if my memory serves me correctly, that they cannot process the essential oil. So for cats, all citrus oils are extremely toxic and harmful to them. Of course, melaleuca, thyme, clove, and oregano, and wintergreen. Same with dogs, um, but they've got a little bit more. They've got some vetiver, some peppermint, rosemary, white fir, cypress, and Roman chamomile. And um, you wanna dilute with cats even more. So one drops to two teaspoons of fractionated coconut oil. Um, you want to, again, treat kittens over the three month of age, same thing with the dogs and the puppies. And you want to dilute one drop to two tablespoons of fractionated coconut oil. Again, if you want to feel cautious and dilute with more of the uh, coconut oil, the better. Cats actually have a keener sense of smell than dogs and never use more than three drops at a time. And with dogs and cats, if you're going to be diffusing essential oils, since their nose is so much powerful, their sense of smell than we humans always have a way where they can escape that room. So you don't keep them in a closed room with the diffuser running because what's, what, what may smell good to us um, may not smell good to the, um, to the animal. All right. So ready for adventure. So seasonal threats. This is my sweet Bella. And um, this is going to be a recipe for seasonal threats. So if they have any allergies due to grass or seasonal pollen or whatever, um, you can put this in a uh, two ounce sprayer and you can top it off with either distilled water or fractionated coconut oil, um, whichever you prefer. But um, 10 drops of lavender with 10 drops of lemon, and you're gonna mint that for cats, and I've got a cat recipe to follow on the next slide. 
five drops of peppermint, and five drops of frankincense. And you want to squirt this. It's 20 hours. So sorry about that. My computer talks to me, and I have the volume up for um, the video. My apologies. Um, so you want to spray one to three squirts along their spine or chest as needed. And again, you want to avoid the eyes, the ears. Um, and with the frankincense, the lavender, lemon, and peppermint, it's, it's okay for them to ingest it if they should lick their paws. And I can get this to you too. Okay. So for cats, you want to do one drop of lavender, one drop of lemongrass, one drop of frankincense, and add the three tables, teaspoons of fractionated coconut oil. And you can actually apply it on their chest or on the top part of their paws for them to lick it. Um, you can diffuse the frankincense in the protective lens or the cleansing lens for 20 to 30 minutes a couple times a day. That will also help with their seasonal allergies. Now, thunder and loud noises. This is actually my sweet Luna during a horrific thunderstorm that we had here in Orlando. And um, to say she vibrates is an understatement. I mean, she really shakes. And you can see her tongue is extremely red. She was high anxiety. I had her in a thunder shirt, as you can see. And then I had her in one of those little posy vests that you are um, uh, infant carriers uh, that you would have for a baby. Um, and I had her on me during this crazy storm. So you can apply a few drops of lavender or serenity to the pads of their feet. I actually put it on the inside of their ear flaps um, because that is a very vascular area. Now I'm not going in the canal, I'm only doing it on the actual flap itself. Um, <clears throat> and that helps calm her down. Um, since uh, Bella uh, is passing, uh, we don't know if it was because of that or she had most of her teeth removed, but during that time frame, um, and then she also got her vaccines, which is a whole nother topic that um, for another day. Um, she now gets these stressful anxiety where she just shakes for no reason, and um, it's 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 really sad. So what I've been doing is I've been putting a, a drop of frankincense, a drop of lavender, and a drop of vetiver, and I actually put that on her collar. Um, since she's got a cloth collar, you can see where this little buckle is here. And I just layer the essential oils right on that. And when it's clipped on her neck, this is actually behind her head. So it's not in front of her, it's in the back of her where she's allowed to um, breathe those um, essential oils in without being powerful and overwhelming. And, and I have noticed a difference. It, it has been working with her. Of course, um, those thunder shirts, they are wonderful. For her, if, if I, there's that small window of opportunity where if I don't get on the anxiety, then um, you know it doesn't take the edge off as nearly as I wish it would. So the thunder shirts are, are good as well, coupled with the essential oils. And, and there's a lot of those collars out there that you can make your own, or they, they sell these little things where you know you could put a patch on the dog. But you know, if they're wearing a t-shirt or a little decorative bandana, you know, the essential oils are not gonna harm the fabric. So go ahead and um, you know, use that, and then you don't have to spend all that money on those um, um, other you know, things you, you use what you have. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see. Eucalyptus essential oils may help your pet breathe easier, so you can put that on their chest. That would be good for them. Um, here's a great breathe easy spray where you have five drops of lemon, five drops of eucalyptus, five drops of peppermint, five drops of cardamom, and five drops of arbor vitae. And you can put that to a two ounce spray bottle and top it off with fractionated coconut oil. And you can spray that to their bedding or to their chest or to the bottoms of their feet. Um, and that does help them a lot. I love this little face here. So mild memory problems. Um, frankincense is an amazing essential oil. It's great for humans. It's great for cognitive thinking. Um, it's, it's great for, um, gets down to that cellular DNA uh, matter where our cells divide. 
uh, fragrances is very grounding. It's very, it helps with balancing, um, you know, uh, grounding the dog, helps with anxiety and fear, and, and it's great for memory problems as well. So you can actually, um, you know, put a drop in their water. You can put it on the back of their neck, and then you can also put it on the bottom of their paws to help with that cognitive ability. So if you have any service animals um, and they're out, you know, doing what they do, um, serving our, our, you know, hospitals or, or, or they help serve you in any capacity, you can add a few drops of lavender to your dog's collar or harness and that lavender, of course, will help him, help you and help all those that come in contact with him. So I think that's another great little tip. Um, the great outdoors. This is great. Um, it help protect them from all natural essential oil mixture. This is great to um, ward off bugs and whatever that is out there. So if you can put this to a 16 ounce spray bottle um, and top it off with fractionated coconut oil. And this is great with five drops of lavender, five drops of cedar wood, five drops of geranium, five drops of eucalyptus, five of arbor vitae, and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and dish soap. So put it all in there, shake it up and spray it on your dog and that will help them um, combat any type of buggy encounter that is out there. You could also substitute some Terra Shield or Purify or even Peppermint, um, which is great. So the itchies. I know we in Florida here have a lot of bugs, a lot of grass, a lot of irritants to our dogs. And um, I will make this up and then I'll also do a little version with um, just some, um, uh, adds uh, some geranium to this as well. So you can do five drops of lavender, some Roman chamomile. You're gonna omit that for cats. Um, some cardamom and some arborvitae and you can put that in it two ounce spray bottle and top that off with fractionated coconut oil. And I, um, I save my, um, my bottles and I buy little spray tops for them. And um, I don't have it with me, but it's in the other room where I have the lavender, the Roman chamomile and the geranium in it. And I'll spray that on <clears throat> Luna's hot spots that she has and she leaves them alone, <clears throat> which is a nice thing. So happy smooth doggy. So this one's great for their coats or they've got like lumpy or bumpy skin. This will help with them as well. And you can apply this directly to the bumpy area. So five drops of the sandalwood, five drops of Arbor Vitae, five drops of wild orange, 10 drops of frankincense. Again, frankincense is very soothing to the skin along with sandalwood. Put that in a two ounce spray bottle and top that off with fractionated coconut oil. And every time you do this, just make sure you shake it up really good to mix the oils and then so you can then spray it on your dog or cat. <clears throat> so after strenuous um, activities and such, uh, sometimes they need a cool down and this is great for uh, massaging into their smooth muscles to soothe their muscles and, um, you know, it, it, it'll make their tails wag and be happy. So five drops of frankincense, five drops of myrrh, five drops of helichrysum, cypress and margarine and peppermint. So it's very invigorating and healing. And then you want to do a teaspoon of organic aloe vera juice and you want to top that off with distilled water. And then you can spray that <clears throat> down after a great time in the park or if they happen to be pulling a sled like in this, like in this photo. <laughs> <clears throat> oh boy. So sometimes when you're in a car ride, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little frog here, um, their little tummies will get upset. So you can um, apply some peppermint with some fractionated coconut oil and apply that to their stomach. Um, but be careful on um, little boy dogs because um, they have some other things in the way of their little tummy there. So um, be careful not to get it on their genitalia. And then also too, um, for Luna, she suffers sometimes from um, some upset stomach. So I will put one drop of peppermint in her bowl of water and she drinks it nice. It helps give her nice clear breath. It helps with her stomach as well. And um, what I've noticed in Florida is I don't get that slime 
we know that the water can sometimes get um, being in a warm environment. So um, I find that very helpful. So breathe in easy with doTERRA. You can do breathe or respiratory blend, lime or thyme, and, and you can apply that to their paws as needed to help them if they've got any breathing issues. Um, kiss and repeat, here's a cute one. In a two ounce spray bottle, you can actually spray this to the inside of their mouth. <clears throat> uh, 10 drops of On Guard, which is our productive, productive blend, 10 drops of myrrh, and 10 drops of peppermint. And again, we're gonna mix the peppermint for the cats. Excuse me. And then you're gonna spray that to the inside of their mouth. And then again, you can go back to that, just drop in a drop of peppermint in their water. All right, everybody needs confidence, right? So if you put a little vetiver in the back of, on the back of their collar, that will give them that confidence to just get up and go. So if your dog has a little anxiety or, you know, might be going to the dog park or meeting other dogs on the street and they're a little apprehensive, um, you can go ahead and put some vetiver on them and that will give them that confidence, like, like we all need from time to time. Okay, so flea free with doTERRA here. So um, you can add two drops of lemongrass and two drops of eucalyptus, eucalyptus to any pet friendly shampoo, but I'm actually gonna give you a recipe here in the next couple slides for a wonderful pet um, shampoo using essential oils. Now, of course, with the flea, um, uh, uh, treatment here, you when you're washing your pet, you wanna start with washing the head first um, because the fleas are gonna wanna escape and then they'll run down the body. So you don't wanna go the other way for them to be running around their head. So always start with the head first and move towards the tail. Okay, so here's a great homemade flea collar. I know I get a lot of requests for a flea collar and um, this is great if you use a nylon collar and you're gonna mix four ounces of distilled water with 10 drops of eucalyptus, 10 drops of Terra Shield, and 10 drops of lemongrass. So you're actually gonna soak the collar into the solution for about 20 minutes, and then you're gonna remove it and allow it to dry thoroughly before you place it on your pet. And then depending on where you are, you know, re-soak as needed. Um, I have been very fortunate and very lucky not to have fleas um, on any of my dogs. Um, we did have a one bout with fleas back in the early 90s when I lived in this one house. And um, my exterminator was not being very well receptive. And I said, you've got to get rid of these fleas. And he says, well, ma'am, I can show you a, a sure way to get rid of your fleas. And I said, oh, how? He says, well, you can get rid of your dogs. <laughs> so that was the last time we used him. <laughs> so this is a more natural way. And um, they won't have to be bothered with that. So horses, horses are very receptive to essential oils. And I have a friend that has a um, big horse farm and she actually teaches equine um, using essential oils and um, horses do benefit from them. Um, and when you are introducing an essential oil to a horse, um, you want to pay attention with nostril that they're actually going to take a sniff from. So their left nostril is connected to the brain that deals with emotions. Hey, honey, my husband just came in. And then the right nostril, nostril is actually um, connected to physical or senses, you know, and so um, they are very beneficial for them. And so, uh, you know, with horses, flies are such a nuisance. You can put a drop of Terra Shield and a tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil and then apply that to the exterior of their ears, along their spine, base of their tail, chest, neck, and belly to help keep those pesky flies away. And I know in June here in Orlando, Lake Nona area, the flies seem to come out of the woodwork. So I'm going to remember that because they are biting and horrible. Um, so sleepy time with essential oils for our little fur babies. So if you take 20 drops of lavender, 10 drops of cedarwood, five drops of vetiver, and five drops of frankincense, and put that in a four ounce bottle and top it off with either water or fractionated coconut oil, you can definitely spray down your pet's bedding before they go to sleep. 
and you can also spray down your bedding as well. <laughs> and for most of you that I would assume on this call, I'm going to take the liberty to say that our pets are in our beds anyway, so we might as well spray our beds down as well. Now here's a great way to actually to remove a tick from your pet or yourself. Um, you can drop one drop of Purify, which is our cleansing blend, on the tick itself and it will slowly back out. Now, make sure that you have a proper tick removal tweezer or whatever to make sure that you get the entire tick out. Um, and if you've got a lot of different ticks in your area, go ahead and save that um, and take that to your vet to make sure um, that you know which type of tick it is just in case um, you would have that potential for treating a blind disease. Um, again, here in Florida where we are, we really don't have that many ticks. Um, my dogs aren't in the woods a lot, and so, um, so they're, they're pretty fortunate with that. So here's a great one um, for those dogs that are regularly um, swim in lakes or swim um, you know, in the pool or whatever, um, and are pro prone to occasional um, ear discomfort. Um, you can put a drop of lavender and a drop of chamomile. Of course, you're gonna mint the chamomile for the cats with a teaspoon of fractionated coconut oils. Dip a cotton swab in the mixture and then apply it to the inner and outer flap of the ear, and that will help um, with that inner ear stuff that the dogs will get. Now here's that pet shampoo that I really like. So you're gonna take a, a, a cup and a quarter of distilled water with a tablespoon of Castile soap, two drops of peppermint, eucalyptus, lavender, rosemary, and cedar wood. And you're gonna put that in a bottle and uh, put it on your pet. So I do use that when I bathe the girl, girls, when I bathe Luna, um, and it's nice. It's a nice, um, nice smelling fragrance. Okay, so if you got a pup that might have um, problems with their digestive system, here's a great recipe. 10 drops of ginger, 10 drops of peppermint, 5 drops of coriander, 5 drops of fennel, 5 drops of myrrh, and then you can top that off with fractionated coconut oil. Um, or an easier recipe is I just used our Digest Zen in the roller bottle. Um, and I'll roll that on Luna's tummy when I just hear it um, screaming and she's trying to eat grass. Um, and that seems to settle it down pretty quickly. So digest then is another great one and you wanna dilute that too. Okay, Healthy Smile Award. So here's a great one that you can mix up and keep together, stored in an airtight container, and then apply a small amount to their toothbrush and um, brush their teeth with it. So you wanna do a, a cup of solid um, virgin coconut oil. That's the white stuff that you can get in the cooking section. You will put 10 drops of On Guard, three drops of peppermint, and two drops of frankincense with a tablespoon of baking soda. So you can mix that all together and then you can brush the, their little teeth with that. Excuse me. And that will help keep their gums excuse me, and their teeth nice. And then if you want to create that bug-free zone again, you can put 20 drops of Terra Shield in two ounce bottle of spray and spray that around them. And I swear Terra Shield is the absolute bomb. Mosquitoes love me, um, but not anymore with the Terra Shield. So I put that on and that actually comes in a 30 ml spray now. Um, that you can get and um, you could spray that on you and your animals and it'll just be fine. So if your dogs have some worms, um, you can add a drop of ginger and lemon to their water bowl and that will actually help them with their worms. Hopefully that won't be the case though. So now what? Um, for those of you um, that do not have an account with doTERRA, you can open your membership account and get started on your journey. Um, you can personally get with me afterwards and I can show you how to do that. Um, it's pretty easy, it's $35. It's just like opening up a Costco or Sam's account. And when you do that, you're able to then get 25% off retail prices. And if you choose to share it with others, then you can actually have an income earning protect. Uh, potential 
but about 85% of the 4.5 million accounts are just consumers and they uh, use the products for themselves and their pets now. So uh, if you are interested in getting a, an enrollment kit, we do have some specials where the $35 actually waived and uh, there's great bundle pricings for that. So I'm gonna show this three option video real quick here and um, I'm gonna go ahead and play that now. Latera offers product through a yearly wholesale membership. For a low membership fee of $35, a wellness advocate will be able to purchase products at wholesale prices 25% below retail. A new wellness advocate can choose to enroll with just a $35 enrollment fee, or doTERRA offers several product kits as enrollment options. If you purchase an enrollment kit, not only will the membership fee be waived, but you will receive a substantial discount on doTERRA products. We have found that as new wellness advocates experience the purity and potency of doTERRA essential oils and essential oil wellness products, they naturally are inclined to share their experiences and their products with others. To help you on your journey, doTERRA has included in your enrollment packet three brochures, Living, Sharing, and Building doTERRA Naturally. Meet with the individual who invited you today to review enrollment options and choose the best fit for you. Okay, so the best is coming, right? You guys have a lot of great information uh, to uh, now take forward. Um, you know, doTERRA essential oils are amazing. They have changed my life. They have changed my dog's life. Um, they've changed my family's life, and um, it's just a wonderful experience. For those of you that do not have a wellness account, when you enroll with me, of course, you get my expertise and my help and coaching and mentoring. Um, I also do a wellness consult uh, with anybody that joins, and then I've got other um, uh, promotions if you go to my uh, website at deannastander.com. And you can go under essential oils and see what the uh, promotions and specials are for this month. Um, some of you on the call have not yet done a wellness consult with me. So I am looking forward to doing that with you to find out what the best uh, products that can help support your body as you have invested into yourself. And for those of you that have not joined already, I always say where your needs are and your budget is and where the two cross, and those are the perfect products and the perfect uh, wellness kit for you. Um, you can stay in touch with me by on my Facebook page and also by phone, text, and email. So that is my information. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it all up now. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, I don't know how to unmute everybody. So if you have a question, just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask. And um, I've got the books here. So if there was something in particular that I did not cover um, and you want me to look it up, I can do that. Um, so um, if you've got any questions, you can go ahead and get started on that. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and um, wanna thank everybody for coming. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll take questions now. So let me see. Stop.